Okay, so... On the current, on the, on the current directory? Yeah. But we, we want to have a liberty to ask the system to read whatever file we want it to read, right? How are we going to do that? So let's modify the same file. Right now, this is just a static script here. It's not dynamic. We want it, we want it to change all the time here. So what we, what you have to do, you simply have to use the dollar sign here. Before that, you have to declare where is the dollar sign. Okay? In, in here, this is, this is usually read to whatever you have declared previously. Okay, if, if you look at this file here, you have to declare on the top for it to read. So let's look at this example here. Okay, let's, let's read, let's read this right here. So let's, if you're gonna do this, it's not gonna work. Right? It's ambiguous and redirect. So what we have to do is we have to give the file here read file. Okay? And then this whatever you give the input here is gonna is gonna use it here. Then it's gonna go into the loop. Okay? This dollar file is coming from here. Did you get it? Because you have to put it outside. This from here to here is a one code. Okay. Do you do you have any questions about the while? It starts with while you do and done. This is just single code here. There is nothing you could do in the middle for it to be uh, able to work. And this is outside this code here. Read file and the input file dollar is outside the code here. So we are going to use this code to read the file, whatever that file is going to be. Now it's telling what file you want to read. I type, I type file one, and it reads the file. Now I'm going to read it again. I'm going to say server. It's going to read the file server here. So now you have this silly, silly little uh, code here. It's not confined to one file here. Okay. Okay, and then read input. Okay, you got the concept now, right? The dynamic input? Yes. So this is a block of code here and uh, yeah. All right, so hopefully that should be it.
And let's see what else we can do here. I'm talking about if then and then so Yeah, if then. Or no, or no, if then else, and then now. Uh, Boolean operation, okay. So I'm going to show you uh, how to pin like so many servers just reading this using this file here, okay. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, it's just a read file and then uh, okay do okay instead of echo. Echo is what is just reading it, right? So I'm going to type ping. P-I-N-G. Hyphen C1. What is hyphen C1? Ping hyphen C1 means it's going to count one. It's going to ping only once. Then I'm going to say uh, servers, right? So it's actually working, but it's erroring out because those are the fake servers. And let's see if we have any servers. Uh, let's do a VI file. Yeah, okay. Uh, so in here I'm going to say google.com uh, okay and then uh, what else we have around here uh, Google, Apple, Microsoft, okay, you got the idea, if there are thousands in there, so it's gonna, all it's gonna go is going to loop, and then uh, do the thing. So I'm gonna give this list here, list of servers, and then hit enter, and it says, uh, Name or service not known. Mm. Mm. 
thing there. Let's see here in I can see one older. Uh it was very yeah. Thing I haven't seen. Uh, okay, so I think you don't really have to put this in a text in quotes here. Why? Oh, okay. I see you don't have to put echo in there. But you don't have to put in quotes either. So let's see if it's going to work without that, okay? So it worked there, uh, Google, VM Protect, it worked, and then it's uh, working for, okay, so Apple.com didn't work, and it's uh, one pack in Visualize, 100% loss, one time. And then the Microsoft, Google. Mm -hmm. Why would it be ping? Ping the... Uh... Okay, so you have to type that you have just done But what else do you think you could put it in here? You could put all the list of your IP addresses for all the servers you are troubleshooting, okay? There you go. It was the last to Microsoft dot something work, I think. Uh, Google dot com ZM Protect worked. And uh oh whatever I so. saw. So instead of that, I'm going to put in the IP address. Okay, and then I'm going to yeah. Zero four dot seventy one dot one thirty four dot six. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It won't. So usually in your work environment, everything is, the DNS is nicely set up and all that. 
If somebody say they can't pay you this many servers all the time, so you have to do run this script and say, hey, I'm, I'm able to run this. It may be a network problem in your area, so you tell it, give it to the network people. And then what do you do if you want this output to go somewhere else? Redirect or use. Okay. So let's see here. Okay. So I'm going to... Oh, there you go. See how fast that was? And this is one. If somebody is crying about it, you just tell them, give them the proof, and uh, redirect it and send it to them. Okay, so... You could get a creative here. You could use whatever command you want to do. If you want to shut it down, you want to shut down 1,000 servers, you put down init zero, and uh, figure it out how you're going to use it, and then run it. Is anybody here? You look like a lost. No, I'm here. Can you go? I thought that I, I I can hear you. I thought that I got disconnected. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. It's very interesting, but uh, thank you very much for your help. Uh, th this is just a uh, tip of eyes, but if you go do like other programming languages, it's, it's deeper, deeper, deeper. That's why if you are on a programming side, your problem will be uh, well off too. I'm not saying you know, the Linux is not there, but I mean, you can be in a bo both places. You can be a hard surgeon and a brain surgeon. You could you could learn it, but you won't be able to practice in both sides. But these are these are these are scripting is very very old. It's coming uh, all the way from 1970. So you could uh, you know if you learn this and if you could get good at it, all you can all you could do is uh, like think of how these are all the little examples of how you could use it to do what. I could give you the little examples here. Now you have a good idea of 10,000 servers here. Now you, what you could do is you could replace this and then play around and see how you could do uh, more in there.
you could use a script to run another script. Okay, so so there is a concept called the file description. So far, we learned three file descriptors, right? So uh, let's see here. Okay, I'll work on that one later here. So, there is one uh, one concept called IFS, okay? Internal free separator and delimiter. Okay, so it's called IFS. Stands for internal field separator. Okay, and delimiter. So, let's see here, uh, how am I going to show this? Run basic commands, party, run now, change, go hard.
ഇതിനായി അവർക്കാക്കപ്പെട ആയത് Okay, file. okay no worry about it so sometimes you get like a mess up sometimes what happens is you get a file which is messed up so let's create a file which is messed up here uh so i will we'll create a file and start a file here So what happens is you will get something like uh, uh you get like a host name zmpt01 and then you get a colon and then uh, you get a ip address 192.168.56.0 Okay, one one thirty one, and then you get you get a semicolon, and then you get like a sixty four uh, GB, and then you get this here, and then you get uh, SDD uh, of five hundred GB. Okay, and then uh, you get the RAM uh, eight GB. Okay, and then you get the uh, process. Uh, okay, and then uh, you get the um, uh, like um, I seven. Okay, so you have a you have a mess up mess up file here, but if you look closely, you have this uh, one one of them would be a delimiter. What a delimiter is that it would be either comma. Full and quotation, or it may be a, a full stop. Any of this here. So this item is here. The one you, the one which is getting highlighted is a delimiter because it's separating the field here. Okay. So what will happen is you will have you will have a file like this here, and it's a messed up file. Usually in Linux, everything is stateless, so you get some somebody will hand you down a file which looks like this. So what do you have to do? Is you have to make it clean so there is a system built in system called ifs in here so let's try to write a script that will clear that up okay so what you going to do is uh, uh So I'm going to say um this 
this script is using daily IFS delimiter. And then I'm gonna just put in here this semicolon. This is what is gonna use here. So we could use uh, actually what we're doing is it's called parsing because we're separating the file here. So we're gonna do echo enter a file in parse. So parse means it's separating at the field. Okay. So we're gonna use this here. So we're gonna use a while loop. Okay. So in here we're going to use uh, read, so we're going to say read file, enter a file to parse, then we have a read command here, read file here, right? So it's going to read the file there. And uh, also what we could do is before that, we will say echo. This is this is only for us to understand or somebody else to read. Echo enter enter the delimiter. Example semicolon colon uh hyphen uh Okay, I think I should explain this here. So, delimiters. Semicolon, uh, colon, hyphen, comma, comma, and then, no, not a question mark. These are some of the examples here, okay? You guys are, you guys are uh, clear about delimiter, right? What a delimiter is? So if you looked at the previous file I created, it has a semicolon as a delimiter. What is a delimiter is? Internal file separator, that means IFS. Okay, so I'm gonna close this. And then I'm going to say read and D E L I M. This is built in. Okay? This is built in here. Um, no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Okay, it doesn't have to be dealing here. Okay, I'm just making it confused. Uh, user, in CP, anything comes with the read is, is going to be input, not the. Yeah, yeah input. I'm confusing you, so don't put that dealing mark. Uh, read. Okay, let, so read. Uh, what should I put it here on dealing? I usually use dealing. 
Let's keep it dealing, okay? But don't get confused here. This is not, this is not like a built-in one here. What is built-in here is, uh, this IFS. IFS is built-in. Because IFS is the, you have to write it in all caps. IFS. IFS is going to be dollar D. IFS is built in, built in and recognizes the delimiter. Okay. Okay, IFSD. And now what we're going to do is we're going to read the file. Read. This is our read command. Read. Okay, so. Read. Uh, the file here. And read. Uh, do and then the input file is file here. Okay? Alright. So let's run this. Yeah, so so it says enter a file to us. And then we put in a file in there. Okay, and it's telling me uh, enter a delimiter, so I'm going to put this in there and hit enter. And uh, it didn't work. Uh, okay, so why it didn't work? Let me see if I can do hyphen R. All right. Should it work? No. Okay, so it probably needs it needs a placeholder for each line here. So give me one moment here. Uh, no, this one. No.
So how many fields do we have there? So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six fields here. So what I'm going to do is what I'm going to do is uh, over here. Uh, read a hyphen R. Okay, so hold on. Let me open another duplicate. So what I'm going to do is instead of just line here, I'm going to separate each each column here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say, first column is a host name. So I'm going to say host. Okay, so then what will happen is echo. There will be host here. Okay. And then the second column, IP. And third column is um ram uh cpu okay and fourth column is hard drive fifth column is ram and sixth column is processor Okay, this this is not that complicated here. Instead of X, we are separating the lines here, separating the columns here. So host, then the, the second would be IP, third is CPU, fourth is what? SDD. Fifth is RAM, sixth is truck. Let's see if it's going to work. Okay, end of file while looking for the match. Syntax error.
Colin. Colin set number. Oh, Colin. Thank you. What was it? Twenty something. Uh. Should it should be considered done uh, while close with the done, right? Yeah, we have done here. Oh, okay. While read host IP CPU SDD RAM proc colon do echo oh right here. It breaks the script here. This is how the script is broken. Okay. It, it worked. So what, what you could do is you could make it, make it look nice here. So let's make it look nice. Okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to go in here. So we're just going to add some bunch of echo commands here, okay? Here I'm going to say host name. Okay, and then the IP address. Um, CPU. Okay, and then I'm going to say hard drive. I'm going to say memory. Processor, okay. Oh, I'm sorry to bother you. The question here is, uh, we saw the script working and we also saw it splits everything. We put an echo command here for the nice looking. So it... Hello? I can't hear you. Can you hear me now, brother? Yeah. Thing is, if we split this file in a different place, uh, we have just like we have few lines in our file. We split them with display on the screen. So it is helping us at the job or at this time. So obviously, you look at this here. This, this is this file is much more readable than compared to this file here, right? Okay, so this is maybe too many here, but yeah, let's put this many here, okay? So clear. Is it possible some of the files have the different lines of elements in them, different fields? Some has four, some has six, some has... Yeah, you do, this is just a metaphor here. Just use this to uh, write your own script. Because sooner or later you will get... Most of the time in Linux, the output is uh, output is a little complicated here. I'll tell you what. If you go to cat, yeah, var, log... Messages here. And look at this file here. Sometimes, uh, sometimes if you want to pass this file here, you could just have to play around a little bit. Um, actually, this is kind of a nice looking file. So in here, you have this here and then host. So actually, you could, you could take this information aside using that script. You know, for now, 
just uh, just look at it what uh, what we have here so far because uh, just look at it here we, we are just subjecting this field here this could be a hyphen or whatever so you have to watch it through more than one time and the file here in this scenario we are just dealing with one descriptor normally if you have, if you are dealing with more than one descriptor you just have to arrive more than one script to figure it out and then extract the data so here, it all all are looking the same here. So let me see what happens. Uh, so I'm going to run this file here and then status. And enter delimiter. So here you got it here, right? And so the where is it starting from? So it has a host name, IP address, CPU, hard drive. You know what? What else you can do is make it look good. You do this here, and actually remove echo from here. And then instead they do a go here. Okay, let's run this and see how it looks much more clear. Okay, now, now oh, this is much better. You could import a text file from there, you would, uh, you know, import somewhere else. Right, did you get the concept of what is happening here? Sometimes you get this, uh, look at this, look at this file here and look at this information. A lot of, this is much more human readable, correct? So you have host name, IP address, and all this here sorted out. This is an example file. And then you have a nice output here, right? Okay, this is the example of output. Okay, so it's copying the host name is here, and then IP is here, and then all this is all good here. So this is exactly how it would work. Okay, any questions on that? Okay, 
Okay. So this is has been nice and good here, right? So what happens is the script is running into problem. Okay, so if the script runs into problem, there is a there is a concept called trap. And it will look, go through the script and it will cancel those things out. So the concept called traps, traps signal, and uh, quit option. Right, you're running in the script here and then sometimes if the script gets stuck and you don't know how to quit it, you have to put this into the script. So I'm going to create a new script, uh, copy template, and then I'm going to say uh, quick, uh, quick, okay, and I'm going to say vi yeah, quit. I'm going to do form sign this. Um, is the example of quitting the script. Okay, so you have to use something called trap. Trap is built in. Okay. So what you have to do is you have to give a, a command. Echo, then equal sign, please press Q or Q to quit the script. Okay. And what we're going to do is that we're going to use we're going to use a built-in. There are three more built-in uh, functions here. So there is no way you just have to use it here. It's called SIG, S-I-G-I-N-T. S-I-G-T-E-R-M. S-I-G-T-S-T-P. Okay, you have to use this with the strap command. So it's going to look for any errors or anything that it will give you a choice to quit. All right, let me finish the script and then I'll tell you. So I showed you here, it says double and is going to be and percent here. So let's write a script here, while, we're going to write a while loop. Okay, while choice equal to or Well, choice is not equal to Q. And the only choice is not equal to we could use right here. I showed you. You could use any, or you could use this as an article. Okay. This choice is equal to a nine and not equal to Q. Q. 
do. And then in here you could type all the comments you want to. So let's let's create a menu here, okay? So I'm gonna create a menu here, echo. This is just a menu here, don't get confused. Okay, so I'm gonna say echo. Echo number one is choice one. Choice one. Echo. I'm going to copy this. Choice one. Choice two. Four. Okay, that's enough. And then for Q is gonna be quit. <coughs> so now what we're going to do is, we're going to do input, read choice. Okay, and done. There's a mistake with the first choice and while loop. Should be an inverted double quote. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, let's run this here, what happens. Okay, invalid signal signification. Let's do few to quit. Trap is built in here. I'll explain that to you in a minute. Please use a call S I G I N T. Okay. S I G T E R M S I G a dino backtick should be, I believe. Oh, uh, say that again? The backtick on this line as well. Okay. S I G T S T T. This is backtick, right? Yeah, no. What was it before? Did the end also, right? Oh, uh, no, right here. Because we are using the echo command in the middle of our sentence. Uh, okay. So I yeah. have to use it. Mm -hmm. Invalid signal notification uh, line 6.
Okay, you're just only worried about Q, right? Okay, so here I Q tap Trap, please. Please, Q, all these are, oh, okay. Echo, please enter. Yeah. It might work now, right? Yeah. Okay, before that, let's let's worry about this here. Uh, Trap. Um, Trap in the bash script. The bash trap command, if you have written any amount of bash code, you are likely. Trap is a simple but very useful utility if your strip ceases temporarily, such as this example, which replaces whatever Uber. Signal one, two, three. Uh, hold on, before that, let's work on this. And uh, signal name then is okay. These are the are we out of time here? Okay. Do you guys want to continue for another fifteen minutes? Sure, sir. Okay, let's take a break for two minutes, two, three minutes, and I'll come back. Okay. So the, it has a built-in command here. So what it does is, So this is a signal name. 
and Sig int sig tab and sig tab. Brother, just one thing we noticed that stop has a SPOP instead of STP. Yeah, SIG STOP. I think, yeah, that's what it is. And there's no P. Yeah. Invalid signal specification. Do we need to put all three of them, or do I need to put all the same term only? Uh, yeah, give me one more. Okay. Usually, you have put all those three in there. Okay, right here. He's doing the same thing. Sig term. Uh, okay, so what is he going to do is... Uh, Trap argument signal. Signal is a list of signals to intercept. An argument is a command to execute one. And this is for our printing script. We made hello. The signal. <laughs> Apparently there are thousands in the area, so let's do man trap. Okay, so you have to bind a G hyphen.
Okay, what happens is you have to um, apparently there are so many in the standard Linux support stand signal listed. The second column of the table indicates which standard file is there. Okay, so what we use is this one here, interrupt from keyboard. S I G I N T interrupt from keyboard. Okay, and now what else we have here? S I G I N T S I G T R M and S I G stop. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is, yeah, S I G stop. Uh, you can see the S I G. Okay. Syntax error, unexpected token, line 16. Right here, right? Scan the wrong information. Okay. Press Q to quit, and uh, so if I'm not pressing any, if I'm not pushing Q, it's going into loop. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I do Q, wait, okay, this, this is only demonstrating how we could use the quit command at the, at the moment to quit the script, okay? So if, if you don't have any quit uh, option here, then it's going into loop, okay, because this is a while loop. Okay, yeah, this is how you have to type. You have to type and then declare what, which ones of this you want to use it in here. So we use SIGINT, SIG term, and SIG star. So let me copy this here. Uh, 
we didn't use we use this and we use int sig int Okay, we use six int and what else? Six term and six stops. So. Six term and six stops. Only six. Yeah. Okay. The general rule of thumb is just worry about all these three here. Don't worry about too many of those. Because apparently I'm you know, I mean I'm thinking in Linux here, but that's not the end of Linux, okay? <laughs> you should remember that. We can use the, if you show the list and show the standard, we can put the speed of the six type. We can use like P something P. I believe it will work the same thing. The standard, yeah. 1990, if you put like that, right? Yeah, why not? Let's try. Yeah. Action core here. So. See, this is a good practice you do it, okay? Uh, which was, uh, let's do which one? Sig8, Sig8, E9, right? Okay, and then Sig Storm. So uh, I think it's still the same, Google. Yeah. Uh, no, actually, this is this is our output of the running system. I mean. Let me signal here. No, this is not true. You just have to still use this, uh, whatever. And do we use this draft only for the menu kind of uh, options or we can use somewhere else also? You can get creative. Okay. But if you know, sometimes you know the. Okay, here. Uh, so if you don't have the quit option, right? If you don't have a quit option, let's see what will happen. Okay, so let's put Q in there. Okay, yeah, the Q is there, but it's not visible. So choice. Um, Here you could change the option here. So what's happening is it's reading the choice and it's going up here and then putting it in here. Choice equals Q or not equal Q. Then it's going to execute this command here. This part is garbage. You don't really need it. It's just for human readable. And while loop, I mean, the Two and n n between the choice one and equal and what is the n n? Yeah, n means uh, either quit or q. Either you putting uh, giving a, a lowercase or uppercase. That's what it's going to do. And percent. Either the choice uh, and or this choice. While one of the choice lower q and the upper q do this. Okay. The the white first condition and the second condition, right? Yeah, either one of them matches, then you could do it. Or you don't have to do, uh, uh, you could do, uh, 
for tube. What do I use for a tube pipes? Yeah, they should work too. Yeah. Q. Open case Q. Oh, no, it's not working. I should. You have to give double end. Void is working. Void is working only double end and not double five on this. Or confused over. Yeah. Because you might want to just remove this here. Final choice. Let's see if it will work. In a oh, choice is then I th I think the combination works with different ones. And or all with works with the different options here, either equal or not equal to. You've been using not equal to and still won't take it. Okay, whatever. You could figure those things out here. Yeah. Those are those are some of the silly things. You have to work through it, but these are the ones you have option to work with. Okay, so you could delete all these here. Okay, if I do Q, it's quitting. Okay, and uh, if I push something else, it's not coding yet. Two, three, four, five. Because we are only focused on. So if we put this here while Q is. So we have many choices here, right? So instead of focusing on four choices and saving the script here, we just focus on one choice. And if Q is uh, matching, then you could, the, uh, the thing is going to quit. If you want to say while Q, while choice one is there, while choice two is there, you could go on and on, right? But if you do it the backwards, the script is shortened. The size of the script is shorter. Okay, I think I'm going to wrap this up here today. Then we'll catch up tomorrow, okay? We'll do some uh, function, code of function for tomorrow. Okay. Thank you.